Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking winter bass fishing, but we're talking late season winter bass. The very beginnings of the transition where those fish start behaving differently. Some are shallow, some are deep, and the different baits that you throw for them start to get really interesting. So a couple of days ago, we went out for just a quick evening session. We were throwing A-rigs and had a good time. Caught a few fish, built a good little pattern, but ran a couple of different patterns. And I promised in that video that I would follow up with you and really talk baits as these patterns change in late winter. So that's what we're doing today. This time of year, it's definitely still winter. I mean, you may wake up tomorrow and it be 18 degrees and dumping snow. And that may happen again two weeks after that, two weeks after that, two weeks after that. It's still winter. But you also get these warmer days, like today where I'm on the water in a pair of jeans. It's definitely not t-shirt weather by any means, but it's a whole lot warmer than it has been for the last couple of months. The fish feel that too. And that is the very front of a transition. So what happens this time of year is you'll have fish that will just stick to those winter patterns. They'll stay on those deep transitions. They'll stay on rock but you'll have fish that begin to branch out. And there are some different baits to chase those fish. So as those fish branch out, especially on these nice days. Now, a nice day is not necessarily a sunny day. Today is sunny and warm, but you also get warm storms. Those Southern storms that come in and they're just 15 or 20 or even 30 degrees warmer than a really cold Northern storm coming down. Those warmer storms are the same thing. Those fish will move up. So typically this time of year, if fish move up, it's a really short window of opportunity. They don't stay up. It's still winter time. They know that, so they'll go up and they'll just begin to feed in the shallows while it feels good, while the water temp is up a couple of degrees. And then when it dips, they're out of there. So if you want to try and catch those shallow fish, you still want to be near a transition to deep water. It's not like you're running backs of pockets. This is not full blown springtime, but they might move up coming out of the main lake, right up along those first couple of secondary points. If there's a little flat in there, all of a sudden you've got fish that are creeping on those flats. So the A-Rig is still a major factor for me this time of year. It's it's probably the best time of year to throw an A-Rig, late winter headed towards the pre-spawn. That's when those biggest fish start creeping around the edges of those flats. They don't always move all the way up, but they're creeping on the edges of that stuff. They're starting to move towards bays just a little bit. They're just beginning their transition, but the A-Rig is a great way to catch them. A couple of my other favorite baits well, my other favorite for this time of year is the deep crank. This is the tactical crank. This is our crankbait. We literally designed it for right now, through the winter while the water's still cold. Those fish, again, not all of them are up in two feet of water. A lot of them are sitting right on that transition and some of them are staying out on the deeper structure, on those outside creek bends, bluff walls, deep edges around that rock, but a crank, is a fantastic way to get that reaction bite, that core response out of those fish. So all these baits, I'll link them down in the video description for you. I've got a handful more, but they're all for different things. They all have different applications. Now, when it gets cold, because again, it's still winter. So I've tended by now to set down my finesse rods for the most part. You're not going to see me hitting that panic button and throwing a drop shot or dragging a tube or deep dragging a jig. If I need to hit the panic button, I have two baits that I turn to this time of year. You probably expect both of these because you've seen us throwing them. One is that little cool baits. This is a one eighth ounce cool baits underspin. 
with a little 2.8 Kitec. It's just as finessey as can be. It's no bigger than a drop shot worm. It's no bigger than a tube, but you're fishing it like a micro little swim bait. So when the going gets tough, as it will, you've got the good days and then you've got the rough days. On the rough days, those fish back down, they sit on bottom. I take that 2.8 and the way we fish it is key. We throw it out, we let it go all the way to bottom, hit bottom, and then we creep it. The same way that I would describe throwing a big soft swim bait in the winter time. You just creep and bottom and that thing is literally dragging across the bottom. Most of the time, I don't think that blade is even spinning. It's just dragging along underneath that bait. But the blade is key. I get more bites with the blade than without. I believe the reason for that is a lot of times this time of year, we get a little bit of that off colored water, right? Storms come through, then it gets nice. Storms come through. So some lakes are staying crystal clear. Some are starting to get murky. Ours have a little bit of color to them. They're not murky by any means, but they've got a little color. I'm fishing around a lot of rock. And I think even when that blade is not kicking, when it's sliding under that bait, it's banging on those rocks because I'm literally on bottom. And I have heard it in our underwater videos. You can hear that blade clack, 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 banging on that stuff. It's really loud. And I think it just helps with the drawing power of that little tiny bait. But because it's dragging underneath, when those fish get to it, they're just looking down at the bait and they eat it. So I catch more with the blade than without this time of year. Then my other go-to finesse bait is the blade bait. Again, something we've thrown all winter. This will stay in my arsenal going into the springtime. The blade bait is a deadly option. Blade baits in the past, those traditional shaped blade baits, I would only fish in the coldest part of the winter. But blade baits have advanced, like the, the Mega Bass Dyna Response, this guy, the Damiki Vault, they're more advanced blade baits. They've got a lot more detail, a lot better coloration. And these baits just continue to get bit, even as that water is clearer, even as those fish are moving up. So the blade bait will always be tied on for me right now. And I've told you guys before, between the vault and the Dyna response, the vault is a much more aggressive action. The Dyna response is a much tighter action because it has this feather on the back that keeps it from really kicking wide. On any given day, one or the other is shining. They are smashing one of them. So I typically just tie one on, like literally whichever one I see first in my box, I tie on, start my day. If I feel like I'm not getting the bites I should be getting, I try the other. Or if I'm getting bit really well, I try the other to make sure it doesn't get even better. But one or the other on any given day will be firing. Those fish like those just subtle changes. But that blade bait, when the going gets tough, you know, if I have fish up here on a bank like this on a hot day, and then all of a sudden they vanish, well, they didn't go far. They just backed out to where it rolls off. So I can back the boat off parallel right where it rolls and just hop that blade bait along that edge. And you'll catch those fish that have backed out. Or I can slow crawl the little cool baits 2.8 through that same stuff. Then again, when those fish are more aggressive, but they're still backed out, you know, just those fish that don't necessarily want to move shallow, but they're feeding, I'm either speed cranking them, just burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause, or I'm A-rigging them, which is really the same concept because those A-rigs, I want that good flexibility out of those wires. So I'm slow rolling that bait but then I'm ripping that rod and it's the same thing. Those fish start following that thing and that whole rig starts poofing and spreading and coming back together and they lash out and eat it. Now, shallow water, I've got two more things that I add in. I love this time of year because this really is when we transition to the fun stuff. Not that the things we've been doing all winter aren't fun, but we've been doing them for a few months. All of a sudden we've got more options. So let's talk about as that water warms a little bit or as it rises a little bit and those fish do just start skirting the shallows. I mean, we're not talking pre-spawn. We're talking about the very first of the very first fish moving up. 
two options. We'll come back to the big bait. The first is a square bill. You're going to judge your color based on your water. If your water's murkier, you're throwing those bright colors, either the chartreuses or the red and oranges. The clearer that water, I lean more towards those shad and ghosty colors. Okay, you can go either way, but this is the time of year where I start leaning towards those reds just a little. But those square bills this time of year, when those fish first start creeping, the thing about the shallows is those fish are spooky. They're not used to being back in that shallow water yet. They haven't been up there for very long. So it's really easy, especially with a big boat, to make noise and just push those fish right off that bank. And they don't even come back again until the next time the condition's set up. It's not like the pre-spawn where those fish are up and aggressive and you drive through them and they kind of go out and around and come back in behind you. You can, those fish are just thinking about moving up. So if you come along and push them out of there, that can be the end of it. So I try to stay back, make long casts. And what I love about a square bill is they're so weedless. A square bill can fish right up around all this wood. And as long as you're careful with it, when you feel it start to hang up, if you stop that bait will back up and then it's, it's running forward, it hits that wood and you stop, out it comes, run again. You can creep it right through laid down timber. It's just a great bait because it's aggressive. It'll draw a reaction but it's less likely to hang up than almost anything else that you would throw up there. And those fish will eat them. Now this time of year, I'm focusing on baits with a rattle in it. In the video description, I'll give you like my favorite flex rigs, our favorite deep cranks, favorite colors. With the square bill, you guys know how much I like that biggie. Lately, I've started putting time back into a speed trap because of how loud it is. There's three or four really good loud square bills that I've added back into my arsenal. We're in a different part of the country. So there's small variations. I'm noticing that those louder rattling baits work really well here on the river where back in California on Clear Lake, I would lean towards the quieter rattles or even silent baits. So depending on where you are, there's little variations, but springtime, those fish first moving up, I like that loud obnoxious bait but I want a bait that won't get hung up and I can stay back and probe in that shallow water without spooking those fish out. And they will run a square bill down this time of year. Now, if you get up there and it's not working, bail out. You're too early. Don't sweat it. Back out to that transition. If they're not there, go back to those true winter haunts, those rock points, those deep edges, get on that outside structure. Find where they are in between and focus on the baits that are working for you. Now last, but definitely not least, it's finally time that you can start adding that glide bait back in on those nice days, on those days that the fish have moved up shallower. The glide bait for me, you can catch them in the dead of winter, but oftentimes those fish are backed out a little deeper and it's not the most efficient bait to fish for them. But as they start to move up and they're looking for those easy meals, you can pick them off with a glide. This guy right here, this is the Sneaky Pete. I really like this particular bait this time of year for two things. It's, it's got some sound to it. It's not a quiet bait. And that's a major factor early in the season off colored water. There's not endless fish up around those shallows in the first place. I wanna have some drawing power. Tim and I did a video last spring, about this time, a little bit later than this, where we were absolutely smashing fish on the glide baits and that water was muddy. I mean, muddy. So if you're wondering, can I throw a big bait? Can I throw a glide bait in my water? It's off colored. Yes, you can, but focus on a bait that's got some, some rattle to it, some sound to it. Now, if your water was crystal clear, I'd be giving you opposite advice. But this time of year, very few people have crystal clear water. So focus on that sound. The other thing I really like about the Sneaky is it sinks fairly quickly. So as those fish are out there on that break, say five to eight feet of water, I can fish this really effectively along that contour line because it's not 
six inches under the surface, right? It's not an ultra slow sinking bait. I can back it out and probe those edges. Now, later on, you start talking about spring transition, you start talking about pre-spawn, whole nother animal. There's a whole different set of baits for getting dirt shallow and sticking with those fish. But late winter, super early pre-spawn, I love that sound. I love that little bit deeper edge. And then I also love how snappy and aggressive we can get with these baits and really work them and get them popping and making sound. And those fish just, they just eat that thing. Really glad to be adding that back into the arsenal this time of year. Yep, I said in the video a couple of days ago that I was fishing those three patterns. We were fishing deep rock edge, we were fishing deeper flats and then we were doing a little bit of shallow flats near breaks. And this is just that neat time of year where you can take different patterns and run them and you don't need that many baits to be able to effectively run all of those patterns. But when you're out on the water, when you find one of those patterns working, the best thing you can do is take that and repeat it around the lake. Cover water, find those places that are very similar and do it again, do it again, do it again. That's a lot easier than continuing to dial it in. The only time that I won't do that is if I'm on a fishery where I just don't know the place. I'm new. I find them up on a, a slow sloping bank like this with timber and I'm catching them and then I get to the end and I'm go, well, I don't know any other places that look like this. Well, then you know what the different patterns are go try one of the other patterns. But if you can think through your lake and know where the next spot is that looked like the one you just caught them on, just keep that pattern going and you can have a blast. You will find this time of year that even when you're on a pattern, there are spots that should be good. They should be on pattern, they should be firing, and they're just not. Don't let that stop you. Continue to run the pattern because again, we're on the front edge of this stuff. And I mean the front of the front. So on a lot of the spots, the fish will just not have made the move at all. You're looking for those select few fish that have started creeping. So once you have a pattern, believe in your pattern, run it. Don't be thrown off when it's not working on every spot. You might run five identical places to get another bite. You might run 10 identical places to get another bite but you can get really big bites, really key bites on these patterns this time of year, and you can catch them some really, really fun ways. Again, I'll link all this down in the description for you. Hopefully this helps you guys. We're headed into one of my favorite times of year. I love late winter, and then just a few weeks away, I love that pre-spawn, man. This is a great time to be out on the water. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.